Hi, today we start Chapter 5, and you can, why don't you turn your book right now to page 280. If you want to pause the video right now, you can. Go to page 280. And on page 280, it's the start of Chapter 5, I just wanted to quickly walk through. You can see there's seven sections in Chapter 5. Chapter 5 is about writing linear equations. Now, Chapter 4 was over graphing linear equations. In Chapter 4, they gave us an equation. And basically, basically, we learned how to graph that equation. Chapter 5 is just the reverse. Chapter 5 is giving us maybe a graph or some information, and they want us to write the equation, almost in the reverse process of what we did in Chapter 4. All right? So if you want to turn ahead to page 283, page 283, we are starting Chapter 5 with the following section. It's writing linear equations in slope-intercept form. And a couple reminders. Remember, linear means straight-line graphs. So we are going to be writing equations that are straight-line graphs. And remember, slope-intercept form from chapter form, from chapter four, I'm sorry, is equations that have the following uh, form, basically. Y equals mx plus b where m is the slope, remember slope represented rise over run on our graph, and b is the y-intercept, which is where our graph crosses the y-axis. Now there's two key things we need to do to write an equation in slope-intercept form, and I'll just list them here. Okay? The two key things that we need to do to write an equation in slope-intercept form are, first, right here, identify the slope, and then the second thing is to identify the y-intercept, and then once you identify the numerical slope and what that numerical y-intercept is, you can just go to m and b in your equation and replace m and b with those individual values for slope and y-intercept, and you have the equation written. We're going to do several examples of that today on this video, and if you want to, I guess, go ahead to page 286, um, we can just do some questions together. I think that's the best way to walk us through this. So let's go to question 6 on page 286, and the directions are for this question, write an equation of the line with the given slope, and y-intercept. So first of all, I want to write an equation for a graph that has a slope of negative 1 and a y-intercept of 1. So all I need to do is to start off, remember, y equals mx plus b, there's slope-intercept form. This is, a, this is a line. They told me in the directions this is a line, so I can use this form. Well, the slope is negative 7, so I replace them with negative 7, and my y-intercept is 1, so I'll replace b with 1. There's my equation, y equals negative 7x plus 1. This is the equation for a line with that um, particular slope and y-intercept. Go to question 13. Question 13, they give us a picture. So please look at that picture. If you haven't turned to page 286, stop the video now and turn to page 286 and look at question 13. In question 13, they have a line. So the first thing is if I have a line, remember, that means I can write an equation in slope-intercept form. Look carefully at the slope. You can see it labeled in red. We're rising 4 and running 6, so my slope I know is 4, 6. And can you see how the line crosses the y-axis at 0, negative 8? So the y-intercept is, and I'll just label that here, the y-intercept is negative 8. Which means if I write an equation for this, I can write y equals 2 thirds x minus 8. You might be wondering, uh, where did 2 thirds come from? Well, remember, the fraction 4 sixths in lowest terms is 2 thirds. And we, yes, we would want to write that in lowest terms. So the equation for this line is y equals 2 thirds x minus 8. The slope is 2 thirds, which is a 4 to 6 rise to run, and the y-intercept is negative 8. I think you, you should find that pretty easy to do. Let's go to 21. 
Again, they give me a graph. And if, it, if the graph is a line, like it is in number 21, then I know I can use slope-intercept form to write the equation. Now, first of all, the slope. Well, I'll take that back. Let's look at the y-intercept first. You notice on this graph, the y-intercept is 0. This is for number 21 on page 287. Stop the video and look at it if you haven't. The line crosses the y-intercept at 0. I'll just label that. That's my y-intercept. My slope, okay? Take your pencil right now and put your pencil in your book on the point negative 3, 4. Do that right now. And then count with me. You can go 1, 2, 3, 4 squares down and 1, 2, 3 to the right to get to the point 0, 0. So my, my rise over run would be negative 4 over 3. That's my slope. All I have to do to write the equation is y equals negative 4 thirds x. Now, I didn't put plus 0 in there. I could put plus 0, and that would be correct because that is the y-intercept. But when you're adding 0, obviously, that's not necessary to write. So if you wrote it like this, I would consider that correct. If you did put plus 0 in here, I would still consider that correct. Let's take a look at question 24. Okay, now, when you see a picture like you did on numbers 10 through 15 or 18 to 23, I perceive if you've watched the video carefully and you've listened carefully that that's a simple task to do to write an equation in slope-intercept form. Now look at question 24. It says write an equation of the line that passes through the given points. Well, it's going to be inconvenient for you to have to get out graph paper, graph these, draw a line, and, and count squares. We don't want to have to do that. So how am I going to get the equation if there's no picture? Well, it's easy. Step one, do you notice here, this is the y-intercept. Think about this point for a minute. Let me circle it in blue. Think about this for a minute. The point 0, negative 8, if you think, isn't 0, negative 8 like down here? There's your y-intercept. Okay, so my y-intercept is negative 8. Now let's get my slope. Now do you remember from chapter 4 we had the slope formula? The slope formula is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. We don't need a graph. We can quickly calculate the slope. So what I decided to do, let me erase what I have to make this a little bit clear. What I decided to do is I decided to call this point 2 and this point 1. So y sub 2 is negative 8, y sub 1 is 1, and x sub 2 is 0, and x sub 1 is negative 3. And when you quickly calculate that, you get negative 9 over positive 3, which is negative 3. That's my slope, which means my equation is y equals negative 3x plus negative 8, or I guess I could put, uh, actually, be nicer, I guess, if I wrote it out as just y equals negative 3x minus 8, because plus negative 8 is the same as minus 8. Either one of these I would take. I guess I would call this better. Okay, so all we had to do here to find our equation is quickly calculate the slope. You can see the y-intercept right there. And then one more to do. Look at number 33 on page 287, the directions. Write an equation for the linear function f with the given values. And if you look at 33, they said f of 0 equals negative 1 and f of 5 equals negative 5. Now remember... This was called function notation. We learned about this in Chapter 4. Function notation, okay? So when you see f of 0 equals negative 1, that tells me if I input 0 for x, y is negative 1, do you understand that if I input 0 for x and y is negative 1, that this really means I have the point 0 for x, negative 1 for y? And f of 5 equals negative 5 means if I input 
5 for x, if I input 5 into the box, the box outputs negative 5, which is the same thing as saying, and I have a picture of it here, it's the same thing as saying if I put x5, that means I get spit out negative 5 for y. Well, this is just another way of writing these two points. Well, all I have to do now, if I understand that this is just that, all I have to do is the same thing I just did for the previous problem, which is use the slope formula to get the slope and see if one of my points gives me the y-intercept. Now, do you notice the y-intercept is right here. It's negative 1. 0, negative 1 is my y-intercept. You can think about that in your head for a minute. 0, negative 1 is the point that would be down here. That's where my graph crosses the y-axis. And now let me quickly get my slope. So y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. I decided to call this point, point 2. You can see it here. I'm pointing at it with my pen. And this point, point 1. So I have to do y sub 2 minus y sub 1, which is negative 5 minus negative 1 in the numerator and 5 minus 0 in the denominator. And I get negative, five, negative 4, I meant to say, over 5. Again, you may use your calculator on this stuff. This is all calculator material. And my slope is negative 4 fifths. So my y-intercept is negative 1. My slope is negative 4 fifths, which means my equation is y equals negative 4 fifths x plus negative 1. Or I guess I could even write it a little better than that. Um, this is fine. I would accept this as the correct answer but y equals negative 4 fifths x minus 1, um, I think that would even be considered better, okay? I got my phone ringing. Let me call. I'm sorry, the phone just rang. So anyway, um, just getting back here, uh, if we write this as negative 4 x, negative 4 fifths x minus 1 equals y, that would definitely be the better of the two ways to write it, even though, you know, in this way, that would be correct too. Um, actually, that ends what I needed to cover in my video, and if you have any questions, of course, we can go over more tomorrow, but though that, this should be a basic, easy thing to do, writing equations for lines, and if you have an equation of a line, you can always write it, remember, in slope-intercept form.